First Timothy six verses one through ten. Right. You know, give us an introduction and all that. Okay. All right, we're, we're live. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to our kingdom class. My name is Sherman Cash. It's my wife Lisa Cash, and we are representing re, we are representing Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Rockingham, North Carolina, where our pastor is the Reverend D.R. Bennett, and our co-pastor is the Reverend Pat Bennett. Tonight we'll be coming out of First Timothy chapter six verses one through ten, and this is a a kingdom class, and we're calling it sound doctrine for right living. You want to start sure. us off with a word of prayer? Yes, Heavenly Father, we count it an honor and a privilege to call upon Your name once and again. We thank You for taking us all during the course of the day. We thank You, Father, for Your Word that we're about to go forth. And learn more of you. Blessed and want the hearers of the word that we may grow strong in the knowledge of you. We love you, Father, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm just sitting here tonight feeling so good, so blessed. <clears throat> yes. Because we serve a God who is so good, so faithful, so kind, mm. and so gracious. Yes. He's the kind of God that would never leave you hanging. He's the kind of God that you you just can't, once you get to know him, you really can't yes. get enough of it. And when I think of the Bible and his word, I, 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 I'm happy that our pastor, Reverend Donnie Bennett, came up with Kingdom yes. Class. Thank you, because sir. he wanted Bible Thank study you. to be more about building the kingdom of God. And, and that is so important. Yes, and God is. is such a, what we say, all wise God, that he didn't leave it to our own imagination. He gave us a Bible, yes, a Bible that, that was compiled throughout many years. Mm -hmm. And the word doesn't fail. You know, this, I like to say our, our Bible is, is like our instruction there manual. You go. They came straight yeah. from the creator <laughs> yes. to us to show us how <laughs> we should days. live mm -hmm. and how things should work. If you're there, give me, yes. give me a, a word or something. I'm trying to click mm -hmm. and see. All right. So, so like I said, we're coming from, um, first Timothy, chapter 6 verses 1 through 10 and I'm going to read those verses in the NIV version. Hey, 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 woman of God, Miss Amelita McLean, I've been missing Hello. you, but I'm so glad that we are here this evening together. So let's read the scripture. All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that our God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. Instead, they should serve them even better because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves. These are the things you are to teach and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ in godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Mm. Griefs, God's word for God's people. Mm. Hey, Miss Deborah Garris, good evening. And I don't mean, I mean, minister, preacher, Deborah Garris, woman of God, good to see you this night. So here we go. We're just going to go through it and we're going to comment on it as we go through it. Verse one, we're going to take that by them by itself. All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Mm -hmm. So this is Paul writing to Timothy. Okay. And we remember Timothy was a young pastor. Yes, well. And so he's already been taught by Paul and he's been a Christian, you know, a believer in God. Uh, for most of his young life. And Paul is giving him the good advice. And so at that time, people were still in slavery, not slavery like in America, mm -hmm. but, but people who owed a debt right. would, would work as slaves until they got their, pay, their, their yeah. debt paid right. off. And so the, Paul is saying, addressing how these people should be treated mm -hmm. you as a slave who is a believer in Jesus Christ and you as a master right. who is a believer. He's, he's talking about this. This is not something this, this scripture, um, back in the slavery days was one of the scriptures that would be used to condone slavery. Mm -hmm. So it's in the Bible you know, that, that is, that slavery is. And so that, that justifies it. It didn't. And it was taken out of context. But what I want to think about is what is the, the point of this and who is it talking to it? How is it relevant for us today? Paul makes the point that the gospel is for both slaves and masters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we can see that it's not just uh, for the ones that are on top, right? The gospel is not, it's mm -hmm. for slaves and masters Everyone. and because of the gospel, because of your belief in Jesus Christ, the way you're trying to walk, that should be the thing that governs how you treat people. That's right. Mm -hmm. No matter where you right. are right. in this society. Mm -hmm. Okay. He suggests that there's something about the gospel that addresses how a person should respect those who have been placed over them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Instead of a master, we're talking about somebody who has been placed over you. Now, of course, in, in school, that's your teachers, right? Right. Your mm -hmm. teachers, your principal, parents, your, yeah. right, right, right. At home, mm -hmm. yeah. it's your parents, mm -hmm. you know, if you're married, it's your, your husband. If, if, you are in church. Mm -hmm. Who do we have? We have the pastors, the deacons, elders. You know, we have right. positions of authority so that there's rank right. uh, among people. Order. I like right, that. right. And now one of the other things that we don't like to think of, but the Bible actually tells us this is true. Anybody you're in debt to mm -hmm. is somebody that's your master. Now think about that. Mm. Why, why can I say something like that? Why? Because if you owe them a debt, mm -hmm. 
then until just like I said in, with the indentured slave, until you pay them back. Okay. So you take a loan from the bank for your house. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay the loan, what happens? Take your house. Right, right. Right. If you take a loan for your car and you don't pay it, you're gonna be walking. So the debt that you have, you are responsible right. for paying it off. And so those people are over you. Your your debtor, the one you're in debt mm -hmm. to, is over you right. until you pay that back. Right. You see, so you understand what I'm saying? I got you, yes. Why am I saying that? Because in in our lives we may not be slaves but we do have masters or people who have been given some authority over us mm -hmm. some people have been given that authority by god some people we give them that authority okay. you know so if i go to work for a person mm -hmm. then if i sign a contract and i agree then i have agreed right. that that person has authority over that's me that's true right yes. mm -hmm. So same thing. If I if I take a loan out, then I'm agreeing that that person has some authority. You know, you. there's something about my finances that have to go right. to that person because I I made an agreement yeah. with them. Okay. Bosses, teachers, leaders, creditors, debtors. We are co to consider them worthy of respect. That's what. Yeah, okay. That's what. So so right. look now. This is this is going to be one of those things when I talk about your debtors. So how about your your couple payments late on your debt? Mm. What happens? There's an interest charge. They start calling. Oh yeah. Letters. Now, now how do you treat those those debtors that start calling you? Well, tell me the truth. Check your caller ID first of all. <laughs> Don't answer the phone, but you have to talk. Have to talk no, you're to you. telling the truth. I asked you to tell the truth. Oh, okay. So, well, yeah. Well, you need your. I would hope you would contact your people because the, the phone I, calls. I the phone calls to gonna, treat them. The, the phone calls going to keep coming. Right. Regardless. So, right. so this is just saying most people try to avoid the people who are even if you didn't make a a a, a debt mm -hmm. with a lender. Say you borrowed money from somebody and you told them you were going to pay them back on payday. Mm -hmm. And by the time payday comes, you, you, you already finished with your money. Uh -huh. And so then they come around. You kind of don't want to look in their eyes, right? Go the opposite way. You want to go the opposite way. You don't really want to tell them, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I, I lent your money out to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know, you really, you really, that's what we normally would do. Yeah. But. We'll talk about the real thing, what we should do a little bit later on. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying in real life, we usually don't give the respect that Paul is talking about okay. right here to the people that right. we, okay. we lend to, um, who, people who have lent us money. Mm -hmm. That we're right? in debt to. Right. right, we're in debt to. We usually, and Paul is saying, no, now if you're a believer, you are supposed to consider them worthy of full respect. So you want to do exactly what the Bible says. Hey, Hannah Renee Williams, you want to say, okay, if I owe you money and I don't have it, my what to give you full respect, I should tell you indeed, what my plan indeed. is to pay you mm -hmm. and what's going on, right? That's, That's full respect. Right. All right. Now, same thing. We know we're supposed to respect and honor our parents, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So so that those are people who are have authority over us. That's right. So even sometimes, especially as we get older, our parents might seem like they're kind of going crazy, going off the <laughs> deep end, asking you for things. But how do you respond? Even if you don't agree, you have to treat them with respect. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. So now, now we're out of our house. So how about on the job? How about on the job? How about on the job, the boss just gets on your last nerves and disrespects you? How are you supposed to respond? The boss man disrespect me, so I'm going to cut a corner. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so exactly. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> so some people want to take it out in a, in a passive-aggressive uh -huh. way. Hey, Prophetess Cox, how are you? They, they, they want to, you know, right, I'm going to make up for it on the sneaky side. Yeah, Some people want to come in, they, they get a plan. I'm like, I know just what I'm going to say to them. I know how I'm going to say it to them. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell them just where they can 
take that, just what they can do with that. And so Paul is saying, no, now that's your boss. That's true. You're supposed to give them full respect. Mm -hmm. All right. And now there's a reason for that. Now, no, number one, you might lose your job. Indeed. Right. But number two, if you are carrying yourself as a believer, there's supposed to be a different way that you carry yourself. Amen. It's not saying that you're supposed to be a doormat, but there's a different way. You know, if you are the believer on the job, suppose you're the only one that says I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not good for you to be the one that's going to, everybody has to walk on eggshells. They, they know if they cross you, they're going to get cussed out. Mm. But you're the one that says you're a Christian. Oh, That's not, you know, you, you're supposed not. to show respect. Amen. You're supposed to show that respect. It's a difference. You should have a, should be a distinct difference in you. In your actions exactly and then then what he says okay let's go on to let's go on to um he says we show them that respect so that god's name and our teaching may not be slandered yes. good evening miss barbara ingram so so it's not really because a lot of times you just want to show people that you're right you know, yes. you want to show people that you they did you wrong and you know it and you want to set everybody straight. Let everybody know. But if you do it in a disrespectful way and you have already identified yourself as a Christian, I go to Sunday school, mm -hmm. Bible study, church. This is my church. This is what we do. And now you are showing just the ugliest side of oh. anything. Then it makes it look like, well, those Christians really aren't about much. Because they're going to look at you as the whole. You're the one. You're, you're the, the one yeah. that's, that's, that is the walking Bible mm -hmm. to them. You're the one. So, so we don't want to make God's name look bad. No. Uh -uh. And we don't want to look like the Bible doesn't give us instruction mm -hmm. on how to respect people and how to, to act. All right, so so here we go on, on verse 2. Those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. So he's saying, if you know that that one in authority over you is a believer, mm -hmm. then you should not disrespect them, not only because they're over you, but you should not disrespect them because they are also believers. Amen. All right. Amen. Good evening, Deacon Ratliff. So it says instead, they should serve them even better yes. because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves. These are the things you are to teach and insist on. Oh, yes. We don't like that word slaves. So we don't like it. But in this context, we're just saying if somebody is over you mm -hmm. and they are a believer, even if they are not right, you don't want to disrespect them. Sure. You sure. want to treat them as you would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Now, look, we're husband and wife mm -hmm. and he is the spiritual head of the house. And everybody knows the Bible says the wife is supposed to reverence her husband, give him respect mm -hmm. just because he is the husband. Now he may be doing things, things that I think don't line up with the word of God. Am I supposed to not point it out? Well, there's a way uh, uh, if yes, I do, I'm supposed key. to do it in such a respectful way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, I know he's a believer mm -hmm. and he's, he doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And how, how do I want him to correct me or check me? If it seems like I'm, mm -hmm. oh, I just had a flashback of uh, when he called me a goat, <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, anyway. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be done in a respectful way. So that, that, that's so, we on your on your on your job. So the boss is is cutting up. I said go easy. Okay. All right. <laughs> the boss is cutting up, but you know the boss goes to church. Mm -hmm. So you gotta look at that person like God looks at you. You know that the amount that of forgiveness that God has to extend yes. to you, He expects yes. you to extend to others. You know, could that be a test that God 
that you are going through. Yes. To see how you're going to conduct yourself. I'm saying I'm a Christian, and people are watching me, see, watching my actions, and that they know a button to punch to, to, to see how I'm going to react. That's right. That's right. You do it. You have to do it with kindness. Mm -hmm. You have to do it with respect. Miss Barbara Ingram said, "Do it with kindness." Um, if look when when we're in our churches, you know, I've been to some committee meetings that got hot, hot. Woo. It got really hot. Yes. But but if everybody, we can have differing opinions, uh -huh. right? Right. But we should still be able to treat each other with love and respect. Amen. And that's that's Amen. what because and why and we should work harder at that when we know the other person is a believer. Because God just said, consider them fellow believers and that they are precious in, in your sight, precious. like you are precious in God's sight. Precious, I like that word. You like that precious yes, word. Precious. He, Paul says, these are the things you are to teach and insist on. All right, so you, you all know kindness does go a long yes, way. Yes, indeed. So we're talking about sound doctrine leading to right living. So we know right here, Paul is telling, he's schooling uh, uh, Timothy, Timothy on how to be a good pastor, how to walk this Christian walk. Right. And even if we are not pastors, we can, this is good advice yes, is. for how to walk this Christian walk with love, mm -hmm. with kindness, mm -hmm. with respect for anybody who's in authority over you and if you are in authority over somebody mm -hmm. with just heartfelt godly love towards everyone and even more favor towards those who say that they are believers. All right. Now that's, that's getting right. us to right living. Hey, cousin Kathy. All right. So here we go. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see where I am. Paul is suggesting that fellow believers should regard each other more highly and work together out of care and respect for each other. That is godliness. Together. This also suggests that masters, those who have authority over others, should have a different view of those under them because they have a relationship with God. All Amen. right? Amen. Because they have a relationship, because I have a relationship with God, there's a certain way I'm supposed to treat mm -hmm. the other people that are under yes. me. And it should resemble the way God treats me. Yes, exactly. It should resemble that. Let's go on to um, verse number three. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, what are wholesome words? Good words, true Truth. words, not cussing words, not lying words, mm -hmm. not confusing words. Basic truth. Right. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. Oh, oh, that's New King James. Let me go back to NIV. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that will result in envy, strife, malicious talk, and evil suspicions. Mm. Oh my goodness, have you all been in the situation? Mm. Especially, and you know it happens at church, but it happens on the job mm -hmm. too. Yes. Somebody is going to say, point out something about a Christian. Mm. Yes. And then somebody is going to say something about the Bible that is just a little altered. Mm. And then everybody starts bickering about that. People get bad feelings. Yes. I, I was in, I was, I'm, I'm having a, a flashback to a Bible study a long time ago. And we were talking about equality and how, how God and Jesus looked at the difference between men and women. And then one of the guys said, well, Paul wrote half the Bible and he hates women. He hated women. And then there was just so much that struck yes. up uh -huh. that we couldn't even get back to the Bible. And we had, I, I remember leaving that Bible study oh, feeling yes. so bad, but that was somebody who 
strayed away from sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. And then that, that left us. So, so it says they are conceited and understand nothing. So here you are with people and somebody is saying something that is basically just a fire starter. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. I, I don't, I don't see how Jesus could possibly have been born of a virgin. I just don't see it. And so then everybody starts talking about that and they get off of the fact uh -huh. that that's the gospel yes. and what God told. And I can't, none of us can go back there and prove it. Mm -hmm. You either believe, believe it because it. it's in the Bible or it's not. That's just one of those things. You mm -hmm. know, you, I've seen documentaries where the Red Sea wasn't really that deep oh, yeah. mm -hmm. when it parted. And then people can go on that. Well, if it wasn't that deep, it might not have been a miracle. Who's the quarter you believe? Well, right. But see, the thing is, these are unhealthy interests in controversy, quarrels, and words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions. And we're we're talking about kingdom building. Mm. So so that's where if you're you're somewhere. Whether you're at a family gathering, at work, mm -hmm. at church, if you start getting into a bickering, trying to prove who's the smartest, who uh, has the most yeah. knowledge, and it's about you showing how much you know, mm -hmm. and it's not about the bottom line, God loves you, Amen. sent his son to die mm -hmm. for you, you need to have him, and you need to listen to the Holy Ghost so you can know how to act. Amen. Right? And it's not the way. I mean, we, we can add more icing mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. There's more to it than that. But once you get so far off track that people are, somebody can leave feeling right. Mm -hmm. They may have run, won the argument, but what did they do for the kingdom of God? It's tore up a lot of people, made a lot of people confused. That's right. That's right. Paul is basically saying that anyone who's trying to teach or preach ungodly behavior from a believer towards someone that has authority over them is wrong. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I'm telling you, okay, so the way to get around those debts that you incurred honestly is to lie Oh no! and go through all these. So, so that's like, I'm trying to teach you how to steal because right. you signed a contract that wasn't a trick. You understood what it said it and now you just don't feel like pain. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm trying to teach you how to get around that, I'm wrong. Yes, you are. Yes, I'm you wrong. are. Uh, uh, it also implies that any believer who is, in a, who is in a position of authority is supposed to show godly character, and any teaching or preaching otherwise is only going to cause further problems with envy, strife, malicious, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind mm. who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. Mm. That is a, that's a lot, but let's break it down. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. So if I am someone in authority and I'm a believer and I am trying to preach or teach that it's okay to to not show respect for certain people. Okay, nah, 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 so nah. what do you exactly? You know what I'm saying. I'm trying not to, mm -hmm. you know, go to any particular. But some people, let's just let's just say let's just say this. Um, the church is doing something, and somebody says, "What about the children?" Well, you just tell the children this and thus. They don't really need to know that because they're not going to be able to understand it. That's kind of disrespecting them mm -hmm. as far as le learning about their religion. Okay. Or say I'm a deacon or a trustee mm -hmm. and, and, and we're making some financial decisions that have to do with the church. And somebody says, well, we, we need to tell the other church members. And another one says, no, we don't. Oh my goodness. They don't need to know. Mm. They not they don't sign on the bottom line. This is they they don't need to bother themselves with that. Then you're Disrespect. disrespecting. Yes. And and what do you cause? You cause friction. you cause friction mm -hmm. among the people. How are you building the kingdom of God? All right? 
constant friction between people of corrupt mind. Now, let me let me break it down. So okay. if the false teaching about godly behavior is perpetuated, if it's continued and people keep repeating it, then there'll always be friction between people who feel like they are entitled and people who feel like they have been done wrong. Mm. Okay, so there's gonna there's so what am I saying? There's some big eyes and some little U's. Indeed. All right, so I'm in a situation where I feel like because I've got a little bit more on my pay stub than you. They call me uh, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, and they don't call you that. Then you wish you had it like me, all right? And so I need to have the special time uh -huh. and the special place and the special, because I am on that, and you just wish you were. Okay. So I feel entitled, and you feel like you've been done wrong. Indeed. And, and the truth is, both of us have been manipulated by the false teaching. Mm. You see what I I'm saying? You. I got you. So, so when we go even deeper than that, I think of, of when I look at the difference between black people and white people in America. Mm. And, and right, so, so white people can feel entitled to having everything that they've always had. Mm -hmm. And black people can feel like, well, I've been done wrong. I was brought over as a slave and I've, I, I've been fighting against that. Mm -hmm from Every throughout century. eternity mm -hmm. since we since we've been here and the truth is once you get to be believers there's still a certain way that you have to carry yourself because you have to understand that god is sovereign yes, and yes. god is is in control so just like the white man could look and say well god I wonder why you didn't make me a black man the black man could say god Wonder why you didn't make me a white man. You you know, you can ask those questions, True. but the truth is God gave you the both the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus died for both of you, right? right? Now right. you both brothers because of the blood. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn how to deal with this and deal with each other right. in a way that is godly and benefits the kingdom of God. So we have to work with what we have. Yes, it's the false teaching. Mm -hmm that makes that constant friction that you understand that's that's got nothing to do with the true right of the gospel gotcha distraction it's a distraction it's a distraction the thinking that comes from the false from the false teaching causes a false sense of godliness mm. that equates godliness to financial gain that's one of the things he said he said in here godliness to financial gain what are we talking about here well like i can say i am obviously blessed by god because i have money in the bank i have a car that's almost paid for i have just about everything i have desired financially mm -hmm. And when I look around, I'm doing way better than a lot of people. It's obvious uh, that I am favored and uh, highly blessed by God because he gives me money and stuff. <laughs> and I look at you and you don't have it. It's obvious that you are not blessed by God. You must be living wrong. You must not really be saved because mm. you don't have what I have. I feel that friction and confusion. <laughs> Because it's false doctrine. You have arrived. It's false doctrine. Yes, it it's false doctrine. So sometimes, you know, we can get caught up. Mm -hmm. We can get caught on. Yes. Hey, Miss Ella Dixie, when it's, I have, I have, when you, you got one of these preachers that's talking, you know, if you can name it and claim it, oh, if God. you sow this seed, you're going to be blessed with more abundance and uh -huh. you can, you know, have big cars and write books and get a plane just like me because that's all i did and you know you all right where do i send my check to oh. or or i remember i was in the service and the preacher was preaching so much and it was about she got to she was talking about healing and she said it's like she she painted a picture that the altar was just like the the pool of bethesda and and you could just step in the water to get your healing 
and here's the line, here's the spot if you have $10 to sew, and here's the <laughs> yes. spot if you have $20 to yeah. sew, and here's the spot if you have $100 to sew, and I'm thinking, oh, how much money do I have? I want, And then I'm thinking, mm. where in the Bible does it say I have to pay it for does not show. even though I know the story about the pool of uh-huh. Bethesda, it had nothing to do with money. Goodness. So all I'm saying is sometimes the the person can be gifted with that appeal mm-hmm. that just sucks you in. And they use a little bit of Bible and they use a lot of wishful thinking and some other things that work. And you think it's Bible. Oh gosh. And because they look like they're doing so mm-hmm. well, you want to do it too. <laughs> let me write, oh, let me get man. that book. What was it? The secret. Uh-huh. So I can find out how to work this thing so I can get it too. Well, it's all in the word. <laughs> yeah, but the, but see, some of it, see, that's what uh-huh. happens. We're talking about false doctrine. Mm-hmm. So if I take a little bit of gospel yes. and I tell you this is how I, you see how I'm, I'm being blessed and favored. And now I'm going to invite you to my conference mm-hmm. that you got to pay $500 a seat. So you will get mm-hmm. what God gave me uh-huh. so that you can have it like I do. I see. That's what I'm saying. That's the false doctrine. I see. Because right here, we just said this This is a Bible. Uh, uh, yeah, this, is, this, this Bible, this gospel is for everybody. Yes, it is. Poor, rich, mm-hmm. right. What, what did Jesus say? It's neither Greek nor Jew. Paul said it. Male nor female. Mm-hmm. It's for all of us. Indeed. Now, all of us are not going to be in the same places in life. And God didn't uh, mean for that to be, right? It's true. And there's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. And, and, and just because somebody looks blessed doesn't mean that God loves them more. No. You know, no. somebody may be using the gospel for financial gain and be making good money about it. Mm-hmm. But in the end, what is Jesus going to say to them? Mm. Is he going to say, well done, my good and faithful son? Or is he going to say, get away, I know Ooh. you're not. I don't, you know, so I'm not saying that you can't be blessed with a whole lot of stuff and say, oh God, you I'm just you saying yes. that yeah. it's not the money and the stuff mm-hmm. that proves true. that God loves you. True. True. The gospel cannot be sold for profit. It should not be. It is being sold for profit, but it should not be. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all stick with me. Stick with me. Verse six, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Contentment. When you can learn to be content right where you are yes. because you know that God is with you, mm-hmm. then that is the kind of godliness that does the kingdom of God some good. Amen. You see, Amen. you not that you have to say that I'm okay if I'm poor, I was born poor, I'm going to live poor, and I'm going to die poor. I'm not saying don't have goals, don't have mm-hmm. dreams. I'm not saying that God won't doesn't have that kind of a better plan for you. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that when you are content right where you are, and you can give God praise, yes. honor, glory, and worship Him right where you are, you help build the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, those people who are playing and you, they're selling the gospel, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're making money off of it. Some people have been turned away, not just from that church, but from God completely Mm -hmm. because I tried it and it didn't work for me. I paid the tithe. I sacrificed and got mm-hmm. in the five hundred dollar thing, Man. and I and I didn't get it. I didn't get that job. I didn't get that baby. I didn't get that house. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know. So I didn't get that healing. And so, so then you turn away. And they're like, "Well, God is not real, or God only likes certain people, uh, or you know." Mm-hmm. So, so that's the that's the thing. Good evening, Miss Tarshika yeah, Nicholson. That's that confusion again. So godliness with contentment is great gain is not only 
great gain for you, but it is great gain for the kingdom of yes. God. Mm -hmm. Now here, here's our familiar scripture that we like. We love. For we brought nothing into the world, mm -hmm. and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Remember, this is Paul talking to Timothy. Right. And you're about to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You could tell the people what they want to hear. They'll give you a lot of money. They'll treat you real good. And you could just live like that. But he's saying, come on, young pastor. If you have food and clothes, you're actually good. Amen. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Now, now I want to ask you all, when we came into this world, what did it take for us to be satisfied? When you came into the world, what did it take for you to be satisfied? Mm. Little milk? Yeah, little rocking. Little rocking, little Flames. close to somebody, right? Flames. And if my diaper is not right, I need, and that's all it took. That's it. Satisfied. For you to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Little food in your belly, mm -hmm. some human contact, uh, dry diaper. And you were good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, my, my other question, <laughs> with Ella Bloss Bland said it took very little. It <laughs> yes. took very little. When you yes. came into this mm -hmm. world, now, now you're going to get grown. Okay. And you're going to decide, well, if I don't have three bedrooms with three baths and, and, and a Mercedes mm -hmm. and, and the longest lashes and the best nails and the... Right. Then I yeah. don't, I don't, I'm not really thinking that God loves me like he loves others. That's crazy. All right. Extra weight. My, my other, other, <laughs> my other question, when you've drawn your last breath, what does it take for you to be satisfied? <laughs> Do you need a gold casket? Nope. nope. Do you need 50,000 people at your going away service? Nope. What do you need, Cass? What do you need? Just Jesus. You need Jesus. to hear, well done, Amen. thy good and faithful servant. Oh. It doesn't matter. When you've drawn your last breath, what do you need to be satisfied? Well done. You Right. Well, it doesn't matter if I have a gold casket and 50,000 people are there and my funeral took eight, nine, ten hours like Aretha Franklin. If I'm good. on my way to a burning hell. Oh. Whew. All in vain. Jesus. Right. All right. Here we go. We're going to wrap it up after these. Verses 9 and 10. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people <clears throat> eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Mm. Well, what am I saying? Am I saying that it's a sin to want to have more than enough money. No, it's not. It's when you when you go to the point that that's all it is. You got to have this, and I go through enemies, hook, crook, whatever it is to obtain it. That's when you worshiping it. When that's when you start worshiping right. money. That's when you start loving money. Right. So, so I, the truth is money, money helps things happen. It does. Money helps things happen. And without enough money, you can be distracted by your need mm -hmm. for your, your basics in life. Right. Right. Um, but an overabundance of money just to have it is saying that you're not content. You, God doesn't satisfy mm -hmm. you. Your relationship with the Savior is not, you can't say, I'm so satisfied. No. Uh -huh. He's done enough. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. You're like, well, he hasn't done enough because mm -hmm. I need to have a few more zeros uh -huh. behind the numbers in my bank account. That's yeah. what you're saying. I'm saying that that's greed and that's still that something missing within you that only that Christ can give you that satisfaction. The kingdom of God on earth does need money. 
Mm-hmm. You Just do function. stuff. Yes. We want to have money. If our church had all the money that we desired to be able to make sure that nobody under our jurisdiction was hungry, that'd be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Right. That nobody under our, under our ju- jurisdiction was homeless, mm-hmm. that would be beautiful. Right. So we want the money. Not because we want to have the biggest, fanciest church, Mm -hmm. but because we want to do so well for the kingdom Kingdom of God Mm -hmm. that people can say, oh, my goodness, at Mount Sinai Baptist Church, those people are are preaching and teaching and living the word Mm -hmm. of God. The whole city is better because of what they contribute to the Mm well-being of the people. So if if I'm wanting money for to be able to glorify God and, and not myself, you That's know, some people about. will pretend, right, because I have a mansion and the, uh, a few Bentleys and I say God did it, that I'm giving glory to God. Okay. But the truth is, if I'm not riding somebody in those Bentleys oh. that doesn't have a car, <laughs> you know, somebody might need a, 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 a ride to church. That's true. But, but I can't use my Bentley for just anybody to get in and ride. Two Bentleys. Okay, yeah, I did say two. I don't even know what a Bentley is, but you see what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, I, I, you see what I'm saying. I so, do. so as we're talking about money, right? Sister, Sister McLean says money is a tool for the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. a tool to do the work mm-hmm. of God. Money helps us get that done, but money is not the object. And 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 because we have more money, doesn't mean that we are more godly. That's true. And that's so true. that's what we're saying. Sound doctrine. For right living. Yes. I thank you yes. all so much thank you. for your input thank tonight. You. I thank Sherman Cash. I, I love you all and I want God to get the glory out of all of this. Let's yes. close in prayer. Please. Father God, we thank you. We come to you in Jesus' name, thanking and praising you. We can say hallelujah in advance for yokes that have been broken, Lord. We ask you, Lord, as we are getting ready to go back into our church sanctuaries, that you give us a renewed mind, Lord, so we don't go back to business as usual, but that we go back to kingdom Mm -hmm. building with with our hearts loyal to you, with our minds willing to serve you Lord it is about your glory we thank you Lord in the mighty name of Jesus amen 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 amen